So our first speaker this morning is a legend in, in short words. 30 years in real estate and infrastructure development industry. You know, we all love malls. We love to go to a mall through the week or even on a weekend. The first mall was operationalized by this gentleman whom I'm going to introduce. And he has built in luxury hotels like this, educational institutions, and many other infrastructure projects. But he chose to do one thing. In spite of being a wonderful you know, pioneer in the corporate sector, especially in the real estate and infrastructure, he chose to follow the Lord in every dealing office, in every work office. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our first speaker for Lead Talks Bangalore, Nathan Andrews, all the way from Mumbai. So a spare wheel. You know, when Joshua asked me to share, the, I was wondering what to do. And I'm a little uncomfortable talking about myself. He talked about purpose. We talk about integrity, excellence. Well, I'm just going to talk a little bit about purpose in my life, how I've discovered it, what God's done in and through me. Uh, integrity and excellence, I guess, is for others to judge whether it was there or not. I titled this talk A Spare Wheel. A few months ago, I'm going to start where I am, then kind of go back, share about three incidents over the last 30 odd years, and uh, hopefully we're back to where we are today. Uh, a few months ago, I was thinking and praying, Lord, what is it that you really sort of, if I was to encapsulate my life, what is it that you have? I mean, as we look back, all of us, we can see ourselves go in so many different places, so many different tracks. Sometimes we think we're down rabbit holes. And uh, Lord, what do you have in store for me as long as you have for me here? And the Lord told me that you're a spare wheel. And I'm not talking about this. Okay. Uh, what's a spare wheel? A spare wheel is a wheel that sits in your car that's always ready. Right? It's never always used, but it needs to be always ready. Supposing there's a flat, you need to be able to hit the road immediately. And God said, that's what I've called you to be. You're not always on the main thing, but you're prepared to step in whenever I need you. And I, I'm grateful for that. So that's why I titled this Spare Wheel. One of the verses that's uh, been a sort of life verse for me is this, that when in Acts it says, when David had served God's purpose for his generation, he rested. And I pray that that would be true for myself and for each one of us, that whenever God takes us, it would be able to say that we served his purpose for our generation. So the question for each one of us is, who am I? Why am I here? Aquinas said we are contingent creatures. We don't exist just for ourselves. We exist because of the God who's put us here. And so when we talk about purpose, we need to find out what it's God kept us here for. So three episodes in my life. I'm going to start with the early days. Uh, when it started trying to figure out what's the difference between a career and a calling. Uh, John 15 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I gave you this work to go and produce fruit and fruit that will last. My daughter is 19 and uh, she was entering university and uh, they never oblige you by doing what you did. You know, it wouldn't make life easy. Right? But uh, she was asking me, how did you choose your career? And I had to be honest, I didn't. Okay? I s started my career in the hospitality industry. In Mumbai, walked into a hotel like this, saw a guy standing in the lobby, air conditioned in a suit. It looked like a good job. And so I joined the hospitality industry. It's only when you get in, you realize what happens behind the scenes. And so it took me a while to discern the difference between a vocation and a calling. And as you and I, I would say today, I've learned that we are called to disciples. Paul was not called to be a tent maker. He was a tent maker and he did a very good job of it. But he was called to be an apostle. And tent making put food on the table for Paul and hospitality and real estate has put food on the table for me. And I, like Paul, I trust that I've done it to the best of my ability. Will Wilman says, humans have careers, vocation is what God does. And just earlier this week, uh, Ravi Zacharias tweeted, he said, a job is something you take, an own, a calling is something that owns you. And so I pray that each one of us would find our calling uh, in between our career. So I joined the Obroys in Delhi in 1979, 
and uh, their management training program. And when you finish the management training program, you, have, you go and meet Mr. Obroy and he tells you, and you can ask him where you want to go. And uh, in the hospitality industry, there are fundamentally two streams, food and beverage and rooms. Uh, I wanted my Sunday off. And uh, well, the only jobs in the hotel that have Sunday off were in those days personnel, I couldn't go there. Finance, I wasn't a finance guy, and sales, I was too junior. So the last option left was the training office, which was a small little office in the basement and uh, never went anywhere in terms of one's career. But I asked for it, and Mr. Oberoi asked me why, and I said, well, people are the future. He bought it, and I got training office and Sunday off. And my uh, colleagues thought I was nuts. Uh, but God was faithful. And so I very soon found myself uh, being the only person in the group that had come out of the Oberoi school and was also in training. And so Mr. Oberoi wanted me to go around the world to all their properties and start doing training because he only really trusts people who've come out of the Oberoi school. And so it put me in a different circuit completely uh, from any of my colleagues. Uh, practically, from a career standpoint, I was earning a salary in India, not great in the early 80s, but I was getting a dollar per diem, I was living in a hotel, and I was traveling all around the world and being paid for it. So my colleagues said, well, this is not such a bad deal. But uh, God was faithful, and through that, I really discovered that my area of interest, my area of skill was more in the pre-opening and project side than it was in the day-to-day -day operations. And that's how I kind of, God gravitated me into the real estate and development side of the business more than the operations. So the worst that I sort of uh, remember from this period is this from Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, it says, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God's provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all you need. Everyday human concerns will be met. And I can tell you from my own testimony that God has done that. The next phase, and this goes forward many, many more years, uh, as Joshua mentioned, opened the Crossroads Mall. We went to Canada in the middle. We went to Muscat, came back. My wife said, we don't clean houses. We just move continents, you know. Uh, but this was now 2004, and uh, we just bought a house in Canada, settled down. She said she'd finally got rid of all the boxes after 10 years. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we felt, I should say, I first felt that God calling us back to India. And I was here on a trip, uh, sort of scouting around from ministry perspective, but felt God very clearly saying that this is where we needed to be. And I was like, how do I go back and tell her this? That you know, we've just settled down, that we're going to go back. And I was wishing that the Bible told us what Abraham told Sarah, right? When he said, we're going to go, we don't know where we're going, but God's called us. <laughs> but again, God's faithful. And I went home, I reached home. And uh, before I had much to say, she says, we're going back. God had already prepared the way. And so we answered the call. God confirmed it. We came back to India in 2004. And so there's just some images there. This is our daughter, small when we left, uh, three or four years old when we came back. And that's her last year at the RZM event in uh, Colombo. And uh, God's been good to us as a family and uh, has blessed us. And uh, we don't regret for a moment uh, answering the call. And so for any one of you, if you feel that God's asking you to go where you don't know where you need to go, if he's called, he will prepare the way. And uh, he will bring circumstances to play. One of the things that we, I prayed for was that, Lord, if this call is from you, then you need to help us sell our house. But just to confirm it, it would be nice if the brokers are Christian, you know, so that I just know this is your hand on it. That very same day, we went out, I did some, had some errands to run, banking, etc. Came back, and this had never happened to us before, there was a card on the door from a broker saying, do you want to sell your house? 
Okay, wow, right? And when I call him, he's an elder in the church. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> and so God confirmed his word for us, and we've been back here now for almost 15 years. So, and I, as I look at that season, uh, one of the words that spoke to me very strongly was from Samuel. You remember that, in fact, there's a book called Seizing Your Divine Moments, which talks about Jonathan and the, his armor bearer, when they're standing there without anything, and they say, perhaps the Lord will help us. And the message that spoke to me from that and prepared me for the season was that we need to go. There are no guarantees. God will work it out. Perhaps he will, right? But we trust him, and we take those small steps, and then God sort of makes the larger things fall into place. So uh, this is the verse that has sort of been an anchor for me through this season, basically, that to your faith add goodness, to your goodness add knowledge, and to your knowledge add self-control, and to your self-control add patience, and to your patience add service for God, and to your service for God add kindness to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Moving forward to the third season, Lavasa, all of you know about it, it's even been in the news this week, we were hoping for some resolution, seems we still have to wait a bit more. But this was an amazing project. Uh, I was called out, uh, the chairman called me and said uh, he wanted to recreate Davos and you know, uh, invited me to be a part of that. And it was an amazing journey. Uh, 2006, I joined till 2010, 11, we were sort of doing wonderful stuff. Got to build hotels, universities, colleges, looked at doing theme parks. Uh, and it was just great because you don't get a chance very often I think in life to build a city from scratch. And these are just some of the images. The si for those of you who are not familiar, it's 25,000 acres, it's the size of Paris, right? And we were building a city from scratch. And then of course, you know, in 2011, there was an issue with the government that got over, but the company nearly, really never recovered completely from it. And uh, by 2014, I left. Uh, but within this time, we'd set up this Ecole Hotelier Lausanne, which is a hospitality school with the Swiss uh, Ecole Hotelier. And uh, because of the challenges at Lavasa, they asked, would we try and run it independently of Lavasa? So from 14, well, from 15 to 18, I kind of tried to run this while at Lavasa, but independent of Lavasa. And this was probably one of the most challenging periods of my life. Yes, lunch was very good. That's what we used to eat every day. Uh, that's the building. Uh, but uh, li it, life was becoming more and more difficult as we went on. And by 18, we realized that uh, we would not be able to sustain this much longer. We needed to move out. And so started praying for the Lord to open a door because it wasn't just about the institute. We had 120 students, so their lives were our responsibility. And we needed to move out and looked at Pune, looked at Mumbai. And, uh, but things were just not happening, one thing or the other. But then suddenly, in, uh, in fact, my prayer was only to get to May 25th, which was the convocation, because by that time it was a question of whether the lights would stay on each day. It was that bad. But the uh, Lord brought us to the convocation. That was over. But we still didn't know where we were going. And of course, students and parents were getting quite anxious. And uh, you can't tell them much, so we'd say, yeah, yeah, everything's okay. But we really didn't know, at least I didn't know. Uh, and then I got a, one of the companies called and said, there's a group in Mumbai, they'd like to partner, they've got space, uh, would you like to work with them? We had a conversation, the Lausanne guys came down, and we were, everything was sort of set. And so uh, while that building would take a little time, they said, we've got a ready place. Uh, you can move into it. That's the one which says June 20th. And so June 20th was also when I was in, to be in Belfast for the CBMC convention. So just before we traveled, seemed to have peace. This was in place, sent out a mail to everybody. Don't worry, September 3rd, the college will open. This is where we're going. And uh, we went to uh, Belfast. Came back July 1st. That's when the World Cup was on. The owner of this place disappears. He goes for the World Cup and he's not reachable, 
right? The clock's ticking. September 23rd is now getting closer, and there's no work happening at the site. And you can imagine uh, everybody's blood pressure was rising. He wakes up around the 20th of July or so and says, no, 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 everything's fine, but I've got this ready place, which you see in the bottom corner. You can use that. There was an American film school, New York film school. I just vacated it. So use that for six, seven months till the other place is ready. So great. It looked very nice. Had an open house. Parents came. Uh, students were there. Everybody was very happy. And uh, we thought we were there. But then again, he went cold. Uh, and so now I'm really down to the wire. August 25th, I was in Chennai for the celebration of generosity. Uh, my dad wasn't well. September 3rd was just around the corner. I still didn't have much of a clue. Uh, heading back from Chennai, my wife called me to say that dad was sinking. That was a Saturday night. Dad passed away on the Monday morning, the 27th of August. Uh, and I had promised a good friend of mine, Alfie, who's here, that we'd go to Zambia together on the, whatever date that was, uh, uh, on the 30th of August. So I was praying, Lord, you just have to bring this together because this is beyond me. But it all worked out. Uh, the funeral was over on Monday evening. I was Tuesday was talking and negotiating with somebody for a place. Uh, Wednesday morning flew to Zambia. And uh, then we reached Zambia, realized that there's no connectivity. Right? So of all times, there's no phone, there's no Wi-Fi, and uh, I don't know what's happening. And September 3rd, the clock is ticking. And uh, September 1st was a Saturday. I remember I flew back to Mumbai. As I passed through Addis Ababa, and the sort of the phones came back on, and the Wi-Fi, and you see countless messages back and forth. But by God's grace, that afternoon, it was closed. So September 1st, we had a deal. A mail went out to all the students. And as you can see, the college started in September. So God is good, right? It was a roller coaster. Believe me, for those of you older, there was a song, Stop the World and Let Me Off. I sang that many times during those weeks and months. I said, Lord, just bring this to an end. It doesn't matter even if it closes, but I just can't keep going on and on. But God was faithful, and he brought us through. And so I just wanted to share that. It was the third season of my life that I thought I should share with you this morning. And the verse that God gave me in that time was, Be still and know that I am God. But it's so difficult to be still, right? Even though we know we can't do anything, it's so difficult. And even more, how do you tell others? Okay, I can take that verse. How do I tell the parents and the students that God told me, Be still? And no, I am God, right? Uh, but God was faithful, and he did. And so, in a nutshell, really, that's what I just wanted to share with you this morning. Three experiences from my life. I trust that those would be a blessing to you. Where am I going from here? I don't know. The next chapter is still unfolding, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. But as Paul says to the Philippians, I'm certain that the God who began this good work within me and you will continue it until it's finally finished. God bless you. All right, let's give a better round of applause to Nathan Andrews. Thank you for what you shared today. We always call the first speaker of our lead talks as the opening batsman. And we tell our opening batsman, don't get out. <laughs> And truly, he hit a sixer on the first ball itself. So I'm going to request our uh, co-team members, uh, Surin and uh, Anila, to come up on stage and to honor Nathan Andrews. Here is a special note written for Nathan Andrews, and it reads as Marketplace Rabbi. Right? So that's for Nathan Andrews. Thank you. Let's put our hands together once again. <laughs> 